the first one on the list, and this just really continues the theme of, I've been saying this all offseason. Some people in the comments don't like it, but Pittsburgh Steelers offense has been a buy low all offseason for me. Specifically here, I want to talk about the backfield and then even more specifically, going to hit Jalen Warren here a little bit. Now, I'm fine with Najee and Jalen Warren both. I think both do different things. The disrespect for Najee is crazy, but I mostly Jalen Warren seems like the guy who's really going to get hyped up. I think both of these guys will be movers in ADP after camp gets rolling here. But Jalen Warren has that Tony Pollard-esque fan club where all the bros are, are so ex excited about all the numbers that they get real excited about. It's a cautionary tale because that doesn't always work out when they're, when they're the guy. Warren's not going to get a chance to be the guy. It's okay to be in a committee here. The reason I have Jalen Warren specifically on this list is because I do think the hype will get really out of hand because people want it to get out of hand, right? They're, they're dying for it. They want the Warren juice to happen. And I think once training camp starts, you're really going to start getting a feel of how the beat writers and everybody sees this offense going, which is going to be an absolute just melee dog fight. They're going to run the crap out of the football. Uh, Najee, I believe, is going to lead this, this tandem here. But Jalen Warren is going to be the, the, the people's champ, the, the, the favorite. So I think his ADP is going to shoot up. Look, the Falcons were near the top of rushing attempts last year. And the Falcons were also sixth overall in RB targets last year, while the Steelers were seventh in RB targets last year. So already starting at a high place, I think we can go even higher. And then really what outside of the, the public popularity of people really liking Warren because he's so much more explosive and does does operates differently. So people get excited about that. He's not the first round pick. That's all, you know, that isn't that that sometimes people get a little disappointed in because Najee isn't the sexiest player while he's out there. Although um, I think he's going to be, again, great in this offense. But a big factor here is is at the number two receiver spot, you have no one right mm -hmm. you have van jefferson and you have a rookie in roman wilson and then you know calvin uh, austin austin i believe is like their third or fourth receiver so th there's not a whole lot here this is a team that already targeted the running back a lot last year deontay johnson is out of town so i think you know there's going to be plenty of targets for jalen warren he already led this backfield in targets both him and Najee were were, uh, like I said, a good tandem, but, you know, the breakaway percentages and, and the 15-yard runs are slightly higher with, with Warren. I know people would think that that would be, you know, a huge difference, uh, but it's, it's not as much. Missed tackles force 56 to Jalen Warren, 53 to Najee Harris. Yards after contact, 808 for Najee, 578 for Warren there. Design runs of 15 yards or more, 12 for Warren, 14 for Najee. <laughs> Breakaway percentage is 34.5 for Warren and 25.9% for Najee. 10 plus yard runs or more, 26 for Jalen Warren, 25 for Najee Harris. So although he is the quote unquote more explosive, more lightning type back, Najee does his own thing and does it well. But here was the big difference was targets 74 to 37 for Najee. So and I think that that number will continue to even increase for Jalen Warren, uh, which is why I have him on here for all the reasons that I listed out. Public opinion is going to be excited about him. I think the beat writers are going to be excited about him. I think they're going to be showing that they're going to pass it a lot to him. And like I said, I could put the whole Pittsburgh Steelers on this offense because I think the hype is going to build. They're, they're a big national brand, which always helps. I've had Friar Muth on this list. I've had Pickens on this list. Pickens is like one of the last guys that you can get as kind of a big time number one receiver. Uh, with a lot of potential. I believe it's 6'3", is George Pickens' ADP. Fryermuth has been on my list all season long. So all those guys, Fryermuth, Najee, and Warren, I think are all going to get a little boost in camp to ADP. And I think we're going to see that that number move a little bit. And on top of that, they in, in the draft this year, all they did was add Troy Fontenot, Zach Frazier, and Mason McCormick, three offensive linemen this year. Last year, they spent the first round pick on Broderick Jones. They added Isaac Sayamalo from, from Philadelphia last year. So this offensive line, again, just going to be a big identity of what the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to do. They're going to run the crap out of the ball. They're going to play defense. And Jalen Warren's going to you know catch a decent amount of balls. I think you could see upwards of 80 receptions 
uh, for, for Jalen Warren this year and also has the ability to, to really break one off and get loose. So I think Warren will be even more involved this year and people will be pumped about it. So buy Jalen Warren now before uh, before things get too out of hand, right? Um, yeah, I like it. Just pulling up the a, a recent mock that we did, uh, which be sure if you if you want to get in these mocks and join us, go over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. We're constantly firing up mocks. We have our own ADP. And, you know, it's a way to get in the action. We, we do live drafts. We break down these things. But just looking at this uh, most recent one we did, let's see. We got uh, Najee Harris going 9-2. Jalen Warren right there along with ADP at 11-4. Yeah, so some good value still on Warren. Right. And Pat Fryermuth and tight end premium, huge value there as well. So, And this was a fast draft, 30 seconds per pick. But, you know, Najee, good value there too. So whole Steelers offense, but I did want to shine a light on Warren because I think the people love him, and I think he's going to get really hyped up and, and probably ADP go up a good bit because people are going to will it into uh mm-hmm. but i did want to show that Najee had a good year too and all those explosive numbers nobody wants um, to hear that we're there but this is about warren yeah <laughs> so buy some Najee too though. warren was the first yeah a two for, for your pittsburgh play. baby next one on the list we haven't talked about this guy a whole lot in this offseason and i wanted good. to want to give him some love kyle pitts <laughs> on the list baby. we let it breathe for like a season perennially a favorite of ours right now i believe his adp is in the fifth round for us five three currently for the ffd adp that's tight end premium look we've we've obviously added kirk and now we have Penix as a safety valve here we're getting a whole offensive upgrade for how they're going to run things we're going to be in a lot more 11 we're going to have more explosives we're going to have a lot more rams-esque offense going on over here this is also a good offensive line so kirk going to have some time to sit back and and uh, do his thing and when Christian Kirk got a hold of a really good tight end in TJ Hawkinson last year, he bonkers. TJ Hawkinson averaged 8.56 targets per game with Kirk D. Cousins. Is there. high score good? Now, obviously, that's a different system, but KOC, Kevin O'Connell, also from that same kind of tree. The Rams won the Super Bowl as the offensive coordinator there. Not saying that, that Zach Robinson and uh, KOC are going to be the same or, or, or run things exactly the same, but basically highlighting that when they traded for a good player and got a good player, they used said good player. Kyle Pitts was awesome his rookie season. Then I think the MCL knee injury stuff really hindered there into that third season with him. But look, he's still 23 years old. He's younger than half the guys coming out in the draft this year. I really think that he's going to be their, their finally their number two option. Drake, you could put Drake London in the same category. I think he could even go up a little bit because the hype's going to be, oh, man, he finally has a quarterback. Oh, man, this, this new offense looks totally different than what it did. But Kyle Pitts already getting a little bit of a, hey, he's going to learn the wide receiver position and the tight end position. He's doing really well at it. At, you know, of course he is at this point. Again, a fan favorite for the most part. Now, some people have quit, and those people are going to quit on anybody after – you know, one bad season, what, especially two. He didn't even have and a three bad. Three get rid of. Well, the first season was great. You know, as the rookie right. breaks the receiving record, or or uh, was right. it receiving or yardage? I think receiving receptions record. Sixty-eight um, receptions. Then second year not great, and then then Arthur Smith. You know, the Arthur Smith experiment wasn't great, but I think you put a new system, a new scheme, and a different quarterback, a capable quarterback who can feed the good players on a team. And Kirk has always done that in his career, and I think Kyle Pitts is going to be somebody who explodes come training camp hype time once again and, and, and climbs up those ranks because he stayed pretty steady all off season. Mm-hmm. Not a whole lot of variation we didn't we haven't seen with with Kyle. And I think Kyle is going to go ahead and probably charge up this may, maybe up to a whole round here uh, by the time we're drafting in, you know, mid August. I think Kyle Pitts hype is going to be back back in full swing and people are going to be super excited about a healthy, good quarterback, new system, fresh starts, still 23 years old. Let's go Kyle Pitts. Seems like a good dude. Like He's working. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he, he's got his head right and just still so young and so much room to grow and the capital drink, you know, and, and everything surrounding him. It won't take much at all. Yeah. No, so. I don't. I don't think so. So I think there's some uh, skyrocketing value potentially happening here on a round jumper, an ADP jumper. Uh, Going to see that on, on, I think, Kyle Pitts. Looking at the mock right there with ADP 5-1. Yeah, just a good, a good value there. Yeah, love lo- love that, and uh, lo- love love what we're seeing right now in Atlanta, 
with the potential moving forward is going to be real excited. And once that ball is starting to be thrown around and, and we're seeing that offense get executed, uh, I think the Kyle Pitts, Pitts hype is going to resume. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free discord channel or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 rookie draft kit complete with rookie rankings, ADP and player pages all for your pleasure. This first one is basically about this is the lowest I've seen this guy go. And and when you start seeing opportunities to be able to pounce on something like this, I, I think you, you exercise that a little bit. And I'm talking about Joe Burrow here. Just a year or two ago, this was the next coming of, of Joe Montana. And everybody had to have him. He was probably going off the board at like QB3, QB4. Now all of a sudden... You know, I see him going 110, 111 sometimes. So the grip has been loosened a little on Joe Burrow. But I think once camp starts, we start seeing T out there. and mm, They forget uh, about T. They already wrote and, T off. And basically. Chase out there and the new addition and Burton out there. I think we're going to go right, you know, Burrow healthy. People are going to go right back to being super excited about him. And there's going to be a lot of buzz about the Bengals because they have one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Um, and you know, once, once everybody sees he's right and, and winging it around and reminded of all the weapons that they have now, a little bit of a regime change OC wise over there with, with Callahan going over to, uh, Tennessee. Uh, but I think we're going to be okay here. They've lost Tyler Boyd, uh, but we'll see, you know, we might see chase in the slot a little bit more. Uh, we'll see what happens with, with the battle between like Charlie Jones and, and Irwin over there, but I think they're going to find a way to get Burton. Uh, T and Chase on the field uh, at the same time in, in a lot of uh, iterations of this offense. So just wanted to throw Joe Burrow in there because when you have a quarterback whose ADP is sliding and obviously that means that the court of public opinion has loosened up on him and maybe some people who have Burrow are concerned, you know, a few years ago, long time ago when uh, Aaron Rodgers had multiple injuries. Big Co, who sits in this chair over here, was out on Aaron Rodgers because one more injury, and you know it was in the Big Co's defense, it was three collarbones in a row, <laughs> or two, or two. Yeah. And what if one more? It, it was the same injury, but you know there was some. You know what if there's a, a you know any sort of what wrist ailment, or he's got an ice bag on his wrist at some point. You know, I don't think I'm not terribly worried about any of that. I think if there's anybody in your league who's worried about where Joe Burrow is moving forward, I, I think he's an elite quarterback who at any point can t take his team to a deep playoff run. I mean, really, for me, go back to the Niners game, uh, Burrow, I, what was it week five, six? Uh, I, don't, I don't quite remember which week Hold that was. Here, but, San Fran, eight. But Burrow was, was fantastic in that game, gave him everything they needed when they needed it, and that's... 28 of 32 for 283 and three. Yeah, I mean, it was just six rushes, lights out, putting yards. the ball exactly where it needed to be. And those are the kind of games that you just need to look at and remind yourself of how clutch this guy is. People forget really quickly. So easily. I know we're not giving out a bunch of values here, and that's not uh, what to trade for. And that's We do that a lot. It's not necessarily what we're trying to do here. We're just trying to say... Hit us over on the Discord. we got a free Discord. Yeah. Uh, join the $5 holler. Get get your questions answered. I'm sure there's already a comment before I said that of... I mean, I said you gave some value. We gave values all the fucking time, man. We're, we're, we're going through here talking but, about a low it, And it's 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 damn near impossible to pull trades out of thin air for you in your league with your certain team right. situation. That's why you need to hit us with the roster review. You can do that over on the Patreons as well. And, and we'll diagnose it. Uh, we got a cool tool with Dynasty Daddy we're going to be diving into where, it, you know, it'll break down your whole league for you. And, and we're going to start getting into that a lot more. So another perk that's about to be available over on Patreon.com. But the point here for Joe Burrow is that, I mean, if you have any memory at all or any recollection, you know this dude is a stud. He's an ice-cold killer. Mm. And he's got weapons everywhere. And... He fell off a little bit point-wise, production-wise, QB 25 right there, injuries, right? Injuries mm -hmm. played a big part in it. And I know a lot of people like to just say, ah, he's injury-prone. And then they do that with anybody that gets hurt for any amount of time. But, like, yeah. Keenan Allen was injury-prone. And then he played, like, five straight 16-game seasons. <laughs> yeah. So, as a wide receiver, one. And so, the point here is that Joe Burrow, in your league, could very well be obtainable. When, a couple years ago, he was not obtainable. You know? Right. When he was... When he was QB seven and four, like you're not 
you're trading three firsts for this dude. You know, right. you don't. I don't think you have to trade three firsts. You can use a lesser player plus a pick plus another player to upgrade your QB situation and go. You're gonna have to pay a little bit. It's not gonna be cheap, but it's gonna be. He's obtainable, right. Right. and like he's still, you know, pretty young, age 27. Like got a long road ahead of him. Like he's obtainable. Go try and obtain him. Right. Yeah. No. Grab. Maybe you have one of those rookie quarterbacks or, you know, maybe maybe you have somebody like a Brock Purdy who had a really good season and you got him for free and you can add a, a first and and something else. And people are like, well, I'll just take Brock Purdy because I'm, I'm scared of Joe Burrow, you know, not saying that that'll happen, but I'm not scared of Joe you know, Burrow. I'm certainly not. I'm certainly fine keeping Bur Purdy as well. But right. Uh, me, too. I was just giving, you know, yeah. there, no, you want to upgrade to Joe Burrow. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Um, all right. Uh, the next one, I, I got Chase Brown in there. As the running back, I know Moss um, is going a little higher than Chase Brown right now, but Chase Brown has been there for a season. Obviously, they're chaining OCs, like I said. My pitch here for Chase Brown is he's the more explosive kind of big-time playmaker. And in camp, you know, I, I feel like you could catch a little bit more of that where people get a little more excited about him. I think both guys are probably going to be very usable if there's any injury, great. But I think Chase Brown, going back to college, underrated pass catcher. Um, and Mixon's out of there, and Mixon had, I believe, 64 targets last year. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of argument for vacated targets, but I think Chase Brown can earn those targets and is the better pass catcher out of him and Moss. Moss had a good year catching passes last year with Indy when he was the guy, but I think Chase is the more explosive, fun pass catcher here and already has a little bit of a rapport with the Bengals and has been around. Um, now, I know Moss, there's some stats floating around how good he was out of the shotgun, and, and the, the, the Bengals typically are going to run a lot of shotgun with kind of the system that they employ. And I, I don't think either one's a bad, but Chase Brown's going pretty low, like 12th round, I believe. 12-12. 12-12, right so almost 13th pleasure. round. And if you're listening on the podcast and you want to see what we're talking about, we got visuals of our ADP and player pages and stuff, head over to the YouTube channel. Check it out. Hit us, a, hit us with a subby. Watch a couple of videos. Get some more visuals in your life if you if you're interested but it, it feels like that the hype could really build on brown as always he's he's, he's he's catching a lot of passes Mixon caught a lot of passes mixes pass catching really helped him out uh last season and those are gone um and chase already i think he caught 14 balls last year yep i think chase brown with his explosiveness and underrated pass catching ability i think is is going to yeah Mixon um, at 64 targets all those are going to chase brown yeah every single one of them so Chase Brown could be a little bit on the cheaper end. So let's let's move to the next guy here. We'll keep this thing moving. I got two or three more for your pleasure. And then this one, again, I said you might hate the next couple. This one seems pretty obvious, but sometimes stating the obvious is okay. And this is more about how I perceive this camp is going to go and, and how stories and narratives are going to get driven. Dalton Kincaid's the next guy on my list. Now, ADP is already relatively high for Dalton Kincaid, and, and I don't think anybody's necessarily terribly far out on him 4-1 in tight end premium for us but I think this could go even higher I think he could be really close to challenging Sam Laporta here and I think Trey McBride's ADP might rise a little bit too once people realize how integral of a part of the offense he is and how much buzz he's going to be getting if you didn't have um, him last year you might not know because it was late and then it was just bonkers right the, the way I see it is the story is going to get laid out of hey Keon Coleman behind schedule uh right you know not not performing well which you know whatever and then hey either Shakir or or Curtis Samuel you know are, aren't up to snuff they're not they're not producing the one or the other I feel like is also probably going to get a bad uh, a little bit of bad press during during this offseason and then what other pass catchers are there Dalton Kincaid has got to be the odds on favorite to lead them in, in receptions this year and I think you know as this offseason and training camp proceeds i think it may start to be more of a narrative get talked about a lot more so maybe you could go in right now and and figure out a wiggle a way to wiggle into to, to dalton kincaid look they had it they got a bad contract with dawson knox they shouldn't have brought dawson knox it's um, keeping his snap percentage down back there so i believe it was like 55 to 45 at the end of the at, at the end of the season or, or something along those lines but kincaid really started to come around at the end of the season and I think he's just going to develop into their number one guy, get him downfield a little bit, suck up some targets. Because I don't, I don't think Keon's going to come out there and just demand a high target share as a rookie. You know, maybe it'll be Curtis, maybe it'll be Shakir, but both of those guys are, are you know, kind of eh, guys. I don't mind drafting either one of them. Kincaid seems like maybe isn't quite always getting the respect that he deserves of of how how much volume could potentially be 
heading Dalton Kincaid's way. And that's really all I wanted to bring to light. It may seem obvious to a lot of people, but maybe some people aren't even really putting two and two together. You lose Diggs, you lose Gabe Davis. Yeah, who Davis. else is going to res- lead them in Well, and then I have, I have James Cook, you know, penciled in here because I think those guys are going to be the two biggest beneficiaries of this offense. So I just wanted to put them on the list of, I think, I think there's wiggle room for both of those guys to move up a little bit because it's going to dawn on some people that it maybe hasn't, especially because, listen, the people like you and I, Jason, who are in this all the time, the casuals are about all those, all those people who haven't been on sleeper in your league in six months are about that lights about to turn green. They're about to be on there. Um, so, you know, as much as we always just think in, in terms of the sickos and the people who are here all the time, there also is a casual bunch that, that, j- that joins in there in all your home leagues and even in some of your other money leagues. Like people are just in a bunch of leagues and, hey, there's not a whole lot of interest. The draft, you get some interest and then the, everyone goes dormant again in, in certain leagues. And I've got plenty of those where people where that kind of happens. You get ebbs and flows of the offseason. The narrative may not have been quite painted for some of those people just yet and i think it's really going to get hammered home here once those people start paying attention because football's back right uh so there's my there's my kincaid there so i think i think we could see a little uptick there so i got one or two more for you i'll run through them real quick broncos offense here and and really we have a show that this one's probably going to get pushed in front of it but we have another show coming out that's buy lows and, and sell highs of adp review kind of stuff and we talked about this in there and it seems I feel like it's going to end up being seeming really, really obvious at some point here. But Javante right now, there's so much smoke all around um, how this running back, how this backfield is going to play out. And look, Javante has really no ties to Sean Payton, right? Yeah. But last year, the Denver Broncos were number one in running back targets. You know, and Javante shouldn't even been playing last year. Right. Right. Like at least for the start of the season. Right. And he did. And he didn't get hurt again. Great. But 58 targets for him, 56 40s. targets for uh, Samaj P. Run, and 36 targets for Jaleel McLaughlin. Now, is Estime going to come in and have a role? Maybe. Is Jaleel going to have... He's already hurt, though. Is, J- is Jaleel going to have a role? Maybe. He- Listen, I like Jaleel. Jaleel's got a lot of good advanced metrics that are awesome. And I'll put Jaleel on a bunch of teams. But he's not going to be your, your number one guy. He's going to be a guy that you can play because he gets some catches and he has a good game here or there. He's, I don't think he's ever going to factor in as being the guy. Um, and, and, and Sean Payton might like him. And maybe it's the, the dude from, from Memphis, that, Watson, that ends up getting some uh, more run here. But at the end of the day, I think what's about to happen is, is all the smoke's going to clear. And you're going to get smacked in the face with Javante Williams getting a lot of targets and a lot of uh, market share of this offense. And look, Sean Payton will divide up the backfield. He has no problem. Remember when Mark Ingram just didn't get any run just because... Well, he was sleeping with his wife. <laughs> he had to have been. That was the conclusion that we came to a long time ago. Um, but, you know, also, you know, you gotta, you're going to have a rookie quarterback whose MO is exactly what they were doing last year. Death by a thousand paper cuts and then a shot. You also don't really have any wide receivers out. You got Troy Franklin, who's a rookie. You got Mims, who you're hoping takes a step forward, but they didn't play him a ton last year. And then you have Cortland Sutton, who Cortland, who knows what's about to happen with him, you know. So I just feel like this offense, it's it, Javante Williams. One, all I think all the smoke clears could be somebody who jumps up, you know, two three rounds here because he hangs around and hangs around in a, in a lot of drafts. And I feel like at some point, you know, and we've said this in a previous episode. So uh, if we heard this before, I'm sorry. Just, w- you know, I, th- I feel like Javante is going to be the guy who comes out of this as, as the guy, completely healthy, going to come out there and, and put that work in, uh, was, was good in the past game. And I think he's going to repeat in that area. Now, Samaje still being there uh, is interesting. We'll see if there's any camp kind of cuts here. Mm. Um, the ricochet romance. But uh, but but Javante Williams seems like somebody, like I said, that at the end of the day, I feel like we're going to get slapped in the face and be like, it was so obvious. Why were we doubting this? And 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 here we are. Um, so so Javante Williams, um, you know, making making a few episodes here lately for the for the FFD guys. Uh, one rookie for your pleasure here. I'm gonna throw Luke McCaffrey LMC in here for your pleasure. I think there's gonna be some hype pretty quickly around Luke. So your late third, fourth round pick, I think could really turn into something here that people are super excited about. Everyone already hates Jahan Dotson. Terry's old and there's good Levi's, which obviously that joke is Levi's are jeans. Jinkos? Like, so it's a jean brand. So 
Those are those are good genes. Levi's. When we say good Levi's, that's what that means. I don't um, know if anyone's missing that. Uh, yeah, some people miss that. But I just I feel like there's name cachet here. He's a pretty good player, underrated, and he's going to be their third. Like there's no, he's better than Diami Brown is already. And I think he's just going to be out there and you have chance for a you know, a new quarterback to come out here and the rookie on rookie love uh, be something that's exciting. And I, I just feel like the name cachet and a couple of good practices and Luke McCaffrey stock is, is going to rise. A couple of camp clips. Right. You know, of him just doing. Now, are Levi's your favorite jean? Uh, I wear a lot of Levi's. I wear some Volcom jeans. I got a p- couple pairs of Volcom jeans that I really like. I wear bird dogs pretty much and exclusively, they do jeans, but they don't right? really make jeans. They're just like so. cash. Yeah. Business cash. Yeah. All right. So we got a, we got a rookie for your pleasure. Got to throw Hollywood in here. You know, got to. I feel like camp is just going to be like, holy shit, Hollywood's out there just dominating with, with Patrick Mahomes. Rice is going to be suspended. Worthy's a rookie. And Kelsey's 100. And I feel like they're going to be making some magic. And there's already been some hype with those guys and how they've been connected and training in the offseason. Hollywood Brown going to bring the vertical game back. He's cheap right now. You could get him for a second. There you go. He's on a one-year deal, so he wants to make some money. Patrick Mahomes needs a receiver like him. Um, and they're going to need to be connected and rolling as soon as the season starts because yeah, it I just mean, gives them something that they haven't had in a while. One camp clip of a downfield right. pass. Right. Oh, my God. Yeah. Remember how good Holly was for the stretches when he's healthy? With, right. And with the Cardinals and the Ravens? Yeah. So I, th- I think this is going to be quick, explosive camp pipe that's going to go through the roof. I've shots, already been shots, acquiring. Electricity. <laughs> yeah. I've already been acquiring a ton of Hollywood. So this is more Hollywood propaganda for you. We know that Reed is slow with the rookies anyway. But I think Worthy, you know, Hollywood can end up with a long-term deal with these guys and Worthy and Hollywood bringing the vertical game back, whereas Pat was operating as much more of a point guard mm-hmm. at once he's, since he's lost Tyreek and there hasn't been a whole lot of vertical stuff. Really opened their offense up. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they did win a Super Bowl. Uh, so Hollywood Brown. Uh, and then last but not least, for your pleasure here, I'm going to throw a cheap tight end here. I'm going to go Will Disley here, right? Um, <laughs> Who? And, and we're going to do some camp battles. He's still playing? A little bit more by low stuff. Does he tear like all of his ACLs and Achilles and, and everything? And, uh, right. He, he, tore, he tore up the leg, but he was, he was having a nice little start to his career. There's uh, no and, chance and he's the Hawks, any hype. The Hawks that. paid him a little bit, but the, the, uh, the Chargers just gave him a decent amount of money. Um, and their, their, their tight end room looks like Disley, Hayden Hurst, and Parham, right? So I can see a lot of uh, 12 being ran here. Hurst, good blocker. Disley going to be the receiver. Harbaugh is somebody who always gets the tight end involved, right? Historically, everywhere he's been, everything he does, the tight end is a part of. Roman will get the tight end involved as well. Um, So Disley, super cheap right now, but I could see the camp hype going. Like, And the receivers right now are are Ladd as a rookie. I like Palmer. Um, And then then Quentin Johnston, uh, Chark. So I feel like Disley could be somebody who in, in camp is getting a little bit of, oh, Will Disley, the, 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 the tight end for the Chargers here, catching some passes, big role in the offense. You know, we're going to, like I said, we're going to do some Lunch camp trail, battles a little bit more hat. by low kind of stuff. Disley was nice to start his career there uh, with the Seahawks in, in, a, in a few game stretches there. Uh, and then really uh, kind of tapered off there. They had a log jam at tight end with Fant and, and Colby Parkinson and Will Disley. Will Disley got cut. Chargers picked him up. I like Parham. I hope Parham wins this battle. Uh, but it seems like... He's too tall. Maybe Disley's going to... Parham's great, man. He just Six, needs eight to be healthy and, and he's super athletic. So yeah. we'll see what happens there. But Disley, just wanted to throw him on the radar. Yeah, you could grab him um, in the trade as a throw-in. Like, and, Let me just get Will Disley. They're like, cool, I was going to cut him anyway. Right, at the end for, for some for Scoop some him cheap, up off the waiver. Some cheap money. So... Hope you enjoyed this one. Just trying to have a little bit of fun, capitalizing eyes on that that camp is about to start, and and talking about guys that I think could really elevate up, elevate their their ADP, here. skyrocket so, if you will, skyrocketing. So appreciate you guys. Be sure to check us out on the Patreon side of things. Five star review if you're listening on the podcast. Uh, what what are we looking for? Sub- subscribe. Patreon. Subscribe on the. Uh, on the YouTube's his with a comment. Tell us that we didn't give you any examples of what to trade for, because I know that's coming. And it's like, look, dude, we do it all the time. And if you have a trade question, man, I gotta know more details. I gotta know 
you know, what your team looks like, what kind of picks you have. Like, it's hard to just in a vacuum. I need to know, is it one QB? Is it super flex? You know, uh, you got to hit me with more details if you, if you have trade questions. Yeah. So come on over to the Discord, come, which is through the Patreon. There's a free Discord. We do extra episodes over there, at least three a month. We're going to have all sorts of good stuff going on. We got drafts. We got the ADP that we've been referencing. Lots and lots of stuff. Our dynasty rankings are, are almost updated over there. So go check that out. See you soon.